Well, let's talk more about this with former investor in FTX and FTX US. Joining us now is Tribe Capital co-founder and CIO Arjun Sethi. So much to talk to you about. It's so good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. So I do want to start here, but we have a lot to get to, as I mentioned. Um, and, and so I think back to having a conversation with you in November of 2022 uh, as FTX was filing for bankruptcy. Just want to get your thoughts on this sentencing today and what it means in terms of closing a chapter for the cryptocurrency industry, which you have invested in over the years as we've not only gone through this, but we've gone through the um, the regulatory framework. We've gone through Bitcoin ETFs getting approved. We've gone through a crypto winter and out the other end of it. I guess just mark this moment for me and what it means for this industry. Yeah, I, th I think if you take a step back on crypto and what it means for the industry is that you've had um, a difference between centralized exchanges, centralized finance and decentralized finance and exchanges and what's been happening there. And I think, you know, this is like a blip in the radar of what you see for FTX. There was, you know, a, a bunch of other companies that had sort of been bad actors. I think the definition of bad actors can happen across any industry. And what you've seen with cryptos has become more resilient. It's um, changed pace at a faster and faster um, momentum for the for the investors that are retail, institutional, not just um, here in the United States, but all over the world. So I think, you know, this is it's, it's good that we're able to close this chapter, move forward. Um, but, you know, the industry has just continued to become stronger and stronger through this momentum. OK. In the meantime, since the last time you and I spoke, uh, you started a new company, Termina, which has been spun out of Tribe. Uh, walk me through walk me through this business model, subscription based AI software platform for, quote, quantitative diligence. What does that mean and why take what sounds like proprietary technology and capability and offer it to others? Yeah, so I think one of the things that's really important to sort of take note of is what's happening with AI, generative AI, et cetera, and what's a commodity and what's not. So if you take a step back, where is data coming from? How do you use it? That's essentially how we've always structured our firm. And our firm is incubated, built, and invested in multiple companies in the ecosystem that have been uh, proprietary data of deployment, um, foundational models, um, as well as the storage of, that, of the capabilities. And so one of the things that we've done over time is said, OK, hey, there's a process that we know that works very, very well, but the data is proprietary. And our data is, proprietary, is, is one of the largest proprietary data sets of private companies, not just in the United States, but worldwide. And it's across crypto, it's across public markets, and it's across private markets. Um, and so Termina has been essentially the culmination of <clears throat> not just my life's work, but my team's. And now we're able to leverage that data and make people more successful. Arjun, do you think we're going to get a moment of AI disillusionment? We seem to have, have gotten very quickly from, you know, excitement to, to hype. And even the web, the dot-com cycle, went through this, this trough of disillusionment when Amazon was cheap and people were saying everything was overdone before the real business set in. You think that's going to happen with AI? Look, in, during the late 90s, people would write the dot com <clears throat> into their disclosures. They'd put it into their website if they had a website, but they would call themselves a dot com company. And so you had an abundance of capital coming into that market um, for any company. And so people would lose money. You'd have a, someone come up with a napkin idea and then go public. I think the difference today is kind of twofold. One is a lot of these companies have real revenue. They're scaling at a fast pace. You're seeing a lot of traditional industries uh, adopt software, machine learning, AI, AGI, all in one. So costs become more efficient, your people are more efficient, you're able to do more with less uh, folks around the table, and you're able to sort of deliver these massive customer experiences at the speed that we haven't seen before. So Klarna, you know, you know a company that's planning to go public at some point, had disclosed that you know they had done a significant 80% reduction in costs in their customer service. When you think about all of these aspects of what you can to augment or save costs, it's going to be a big deal.